Hello students. Today I will tell you about the blood vessel system. There is the question. This is the syllabus as per, according to the national education policy. Uh, now here is the there are three components that the blood. The first question is what is blood? Blood is a liquid connective tissue and it transports along with the vessels. Therefore, here is the vascular and it follows a pathway. That's why here is the system word used. The blood vascular system, blood vascular system means uh, the transport of a liquid inside to the vessels uh, in a pathway of the body. That's why this system is known as blood vascular system. This blood vascular system is a lifeline system of the organisms because this system plays many important roles for governing all the physiological functioning of the organisms. Here is the syllabus that is hematopoiesis, composition, function of the blood, blood coagulation and brief account of the immunity, types of heart, origin and conduction of heartbeat and cardiac cycle. But in the present lecture, I will only tell you about the hematopoiesis. hematopoiesis. Here is hematopoiesis means him, this word coming from the iron, him means iron and poiesis means the formation of the blood. Now we will see just like this is a hematopoiesis. Basically hematopoiesis occurs uh, the, in the bone marrow. Bone marrow means where is the bone marrow? If you talk about this is your humerus and in the case of the bone of thigh that is femur, in case of the long bones, the soft spongy tissues is present and that soft spongy tissues is known as the bone marrow and inside to this bone marrow uh, the formation of the blood occurs. Basically if we talk about in case of the blood, blood has 55 percent, approximately 55 percent is plasma and rest part of the blood is formed elements 45 percent. Under to these formed elements the RBC red blood corpuscles, white blood corpuscles, and platelets exist. Here you will talk about this one. And this, pla this, is, uh, this plasma has uh, the many proteins and other things are also exist. The question is how can you separate the plasma? So at first so what you have to do, you bleed to the animals and then anti uh, and you need some anticoagulants in your vials. You uh, post some anticoagulants in your vials then take the blood in that that vials and everything would be in the eyes then you should go uh, to the refrigerated centrifuge in refrigerated centrifuge in a certain uh, rpm value you can just do uh, centrifuge to that part so the supernatant part will come in the form of plasma and the formed elements inside so now with the help of hamilton syringe or micro pipette you can separate to that plasma and the rest part is the formed elements that are your the RBC, WBC and platelets. If you are, uh, but whenever you are working on the serum, so in case of serum, what you do, you just to uh, take the blood and then uh, coagulate to that blood in the air dry conditions, then to uh, centrifuge that uh, blood in 3000 RPM and the supernatant contents will get as the serum. So, in case the serum is also an important part of this one. But here is our, uh, our target is that there are the precursor cells that is the hemocytoplast, hematocytoplast. This hemocytoplast, blast means these are the stem cells. Now, the question is what is stem cells? So, stem cells are those cells which can differentiate to any types of the cells. But when these stem cells become progenitor cells, so the basic difference between progenitor cells and stem cells is the fate is determined in case of progenitor cells, but fate is not determined in case of the stem cells. That means the stem cells can differentiate any types of the cells. On the other hand, the progenitor cells can differentiate to their specific targets. Here you will see this, this is the hemocytoplast and this hemocytoplast has again subdivided into another set of the stem cells with the help of some mitogens such as the proethroblast, myoblast, 
lymphoblast, monoblast, and megatheoblast. If you talk about this prothoethoblast, then with if this prothoethoblast undergoes to the some certain mitotic divisions, then it becomes the polychromatic erythroblast. Then the erythrocytes will become. Here will be happening that is the some proethrocytes because this diagram I have taken through the Creative Commons license. So here this proethrocyte pro blast has been changed into the proethrocytes. Then it, it changed into a normoblast. In case of the normoblast conditions, the nucleus is disintegrated in the mammalian RBC and RBC will, will become the enucleated. After that, these proethrocytes will differentiate into the mature formation of these erythrocytes. These are known as the red red corpuscles. On the other hand, if you are talking about in case of this myoblast, here is the this myoblast is undergoes to the some mitotic divisions. Then it becomes the progranulocytes, and these progranulocytes will sub divided into basophils, eosinophils, and neutrophils. These are the granule-like structures are present in these, these cells. They are, that's why these cells are known as granulocytes. The question is why these are known as basophils because the basic dye stains to this one. That's why it is basophils, and the acidic dye stains to this. Then it becomes eosinophils and neutrophils. The, both the composition of the basic and as the acidic dye act on it. That's why these are the neutrophils. Here is an important question is that uh, uh, neutrophil is the first cell which resides at the site of infection. You have to note down it for your competitive exams. In case of the lymphoblast, other hand is the lymphoblast. This lymphoblast certain undergoes to the mitotic fusions with the help of some mitogens or interleukins, then it becomes the lymphocytes. Then ultimately, these lymphocytes will become either differentiated. This the maturation of these lymphocytes will determine its nature. If these lymphocytes will mature in the thymus gland, then they become the T lymphocytes. If other than the thymus gland, these are mature, then they become the B lymphocytes. Basically, this T lymphocyte is responsible for the cytotoxic toxicity, cell mediated cytotoxic toxicity. And the B lymphocytes, whenever the antigen comes in the bodies, the B lymphocytes will differentiate into the plasma cells. Then the plasma cells will produce the antibodies for the specific antigens. That is known as the humoral immune response. In here is the monoblast. These are the monoblast. These are the these are also the stem cells of these monocytes. Then again, in the certain mitotic divisions occurs in these monoblast cells, then is differentiated into the monocytes. This monocytes, monocyte, uh, ultimately this monocyte differentiate into the uh, macrophage cells. Also, it's showing the here. Uh, this shows the phagocytosis. These are the granulos, egg granulocyte. Here is the granule-like structures are not present, and the granulocytes and egg granulocytes will pr produce the leukocytes, and these leukocytes will move with white blood cells. These are the defense mechanism. These cells plays an important role in the defense mechanism or the immune mechanism of the organisms. These are the megakaryoblast. These megakaryoblast then separated into the megakaryocytes uh, and that with the help of some mitotic divisions or mitogens, ultimately these megakaryocytes will produce the platelets and these platelets uh, will play an important role in the blood clotting mechanisms. So my dear students, here are some specific points that in this lecture, I summarize this lecture. So when uh, you have to uh, think about after listening to this lecture, you should think about that where what is blood and where is the formation of blood occurs and what are the stem cells and what are the progenitor cells, what is the basic difference between stem cells and progenitor cells and uh, next is that the composition of the blood, the plasma, what is plasma, how we will separate the plasma. In, from the blood and what is serum, how can we can separate the serum from the blood as well as the formed elements and what are the formed elements, what is why RBC is enucleated. The RBC is enucleated because it uh, this RBC uh, transport the oxygen and so the nature supports for the transportation of the oxygen process. Uh, that's why in normal blast conditions this RBC becomes enucleated. And, and the agranulocytes and granulocytes are the, by, uh, the parts of leukocytes and the platelets. So the whole lectures uh, is basically uh, 
we focus the understanding of the plot. Uh, for any questions you have, so you can uh, my email ID is here. You can email me. Email me. I will just uh, solve your questions as soon as possible. Thank you very much.